Hi, my name is Brian Vollmer. Together with my wife Linda, we live in the old blue-collar district of East London, Ontario, in a magical place called Planet Helix. For the past 41 years, I've been the lead singer of the Canadian rock act Helix. And in that time, I've had a successful career and toured the world. My wife Linda is a lot like me, and the thing we have in common is our rock and roll lifestyle. She's from Blackpool, Northern England, and at a very early age, she struck out and left Blackpool and set off for London, England, the big city, where at first she was a street trader, and then she was a waitress at a rock club called Dingwalds. Later, she worked at the original Hard Rock Cafe just off Hyde Park, where she served many celebrities like Muhammad Ali and uh, Steve Tyler, Roger Daltrey. To outsiders, our life seems a little bizarre. And it is. One day, Linda might be tending to her flower beds and I could be mowing the lawn. And the next day, we could be having supper with Nika McBrain of Iron Maiden or traveling to Helix shows across the country and around the world. This is why we call the Volmers the Reality Unreality Show. And it's uh, the middle of March and we've been back from Cuba for about a month. And uh, now we're off on another holiday. I want you to do the dishes. I'm not leaving without the dishes being done. That looks gross. I just got to teach today, drop the dog off at my mother's, and then we're, we're out of here. So You're we're going to be mad again. <laughs> you're smiling. I know, but... But you're mad inside and laughing. You're you mad know. inside and laughing on the outside, right? I guess. Yeah, bullshit. Because my wife likes the sun. And hopefully by the time we get back, the rest of that snow will be gone. Well, we're at my mom's. Tell them about her cushion. Yeah. Yeah, you're right there. Come out. Uh-oh, it's crazy dog. Come on, let's go see crazy dog. Hi, crazy dog. Poor summer. You gotta live with crazy dogs for the next couple of weeks. I'm just gonna my take baby. my baby. You're talking about my little baby there. Oh. What's summer. happening? Oh, you're gonna be spoiled for the next three weeks. All right, we gotta get going. Well, we're off to Florida. Get me out of here. Take me far away. Think I need a little weekend holiday. Gonna make some noise. Blow some steam, cause I've earned the right, yeah it's Friday night, there's no need a reason to party, so get up, get up, there's no need a reason to rock and roll, so get up and party. On our last trip to Florida, Linda and I stayed at the Travel Lodge in Fort Myers. Next door to our hotel was Mel's Diner. The manager of Mel's was a guy named William Malstrom. Each day, we'd have a conversation with each other. By the end of the week, it was like we were old friends. After we returned home, we kept in touch by emails. When we decided to vacation in Florida this spring, William invited us to stay at their house while we were in the city. I thought that was pretty cool for them to do that for us. A lot of the friends Linda and I have met over the years have been the result of what we call happy accidents and our friendship with the Malstroms was turning out to be a prime example of just this very thing. And so we're finally here in Fort Myers at uh, Bill Malstrom's place. What's your name? Joshua. You smile? And here we are at Mel's Diner in Fort Myers and... Uh, a year later. A year later and we decided to come uh, see Bill. Yeah. Who's the manager uh, here. 20 past nine in the morning and it's... Uh, Nice and warm. It's a pretty cool restaurant. Here comes the trouble. Uh oh. There he is. Man of the hour. Good morning. Hey, I'm cool around my wife. Yeah, Come here too. with the sweet potato fries. Okay. Bill and Laurie Malmstrom, uh, they have two wonderful kids, uh, Grace and Josh. And Grace is the Clothes. She has so many clothes and shoes, and um, she's like a little model. And uh, Josh is the the singer, 
who has his little karaoke box and uh, just loves to sing and dance all the time. That's all he does when he gets back home from school and he'll get his little box out and start singing and the microphone and puts the shades on. So are you going to be a famous singer in a couple of years? No. If I come to one of your gigs, will you put me on the guest list? No. And Josh is all the moves. Did your dad teach you those moves? Florida. <laughs> Florida. Florida. Have another drink. It'll calm you down. <laughs> you do this all the time. Oh, well, he's wasting everybody's time. <laughs> Here, have another drink. <laughs> Bill could be doing stuff. I think it's the alcohol talk. <laughs> the booze, the amount of booze consumed is equal to the uh, temper. Oh, go away. <laughs> Ironically, the very first weekend we were in Florida, our old friend Tay Thibodeau just happened to be playing in the Zell's Cooper clone band at the Beach Whale at Fort Myers Beach. When we first met Tate, he played in Super Freak the disco show band that Helix drummer Fritz Heinz was in when he lived in Florida during the 90s. We decided to see Tate's new band and take William and Lori along with us. Here we are at the Beach Whale and we have the one and only Mr. Tate Thibodeau. Rock and roll, Cooper tonight. Now we get to lose a big pot of black And that don't suit you, lies are dragged What's the name of this band? Soul si Soul Asylum, I think it is called. You don't know what band you're. I, I really don't. <laughs> it's all about me. See, I'm thinking of doing Alice, Alice, Alice. Tonight it'll be a special appearance by Alice, named Gypsy Alice, a.k.a. Alice Hooper, Truby Band, here Great. tonight. Well, I, I lose scarves. Every time I do a show, the scarves, I lose a scarf every night. So this time I'm not wearing a scarf tonight, so I will not be handing that out or girls ripping it off Yes, tonight. but will you be losing your underwear, Kate? Oh, I don't wear anywhere. Saturday morning here in Fort Myers, and uh, we're going to eat at the uh, Crack of Dawn Barrel, and then we're going to satisfy my wife's craving of garage sales. Are you looking forward to that or what? I am. Yeah. What is it about garage sales that? Because uh, you just don't know what you're going to find. And kind of uh, like when I married you, eh? That's right. And there's Linda, the garage sale Nazi. 
Turn here, turn there, turn everywhere. Keep going. Uh, we gotta get out of here now. Right. Oh Left. My gosh. Right. Left. Oh, right. Straight over. Keep going. Come on, Brian. The, all the good stuff's gonna be gone. But, uh, let's just concentrate. Yeah, let's. Nothing. I you said when you me. see a garage sale sign, you have an argument. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Come on, let's get to the next one. Okay. Left here. Right. Wow, you, you aren't even waiting to stop to get your seatbelt off, for God's sake. That's right, but you could have got closer. Okay, well, I could have just slowed down. You could have jumped out. Garage sale, garage sale, garage sale, garage sale, garage sale, garage sale. Ah! One thing Linda and I love about Fort Myers is Fort Myers Beach and the boardwalk there. But you got to go early. The water is clear and warm and the scenery is breathtaking. I can read the menu, but I just can't eat off it, you know what I mean? That's right, and don't you forget it. It's about 85 degrees, and I phoned Randy last night, and he pointed out that it's 85 degrees hotter here than it is back home in the Great White North, where it's freezing cold. And once again, we're walking down the side streets where people don't usually walk. I want, to I want to live here naked. Yeah. See how the other half lives, hon? But that's okay. We're happy. Give me a kiss. Okay, she tried to give me the tongue, but wouldn't let her. Here she is, checking out houses for sale that we can't afford, and just peeking in through the windows. And I would laugh if somebody looked back at her and come running out and call her a pervert. We hung around Fort Myers until the next Wednesday, taking in Fort Myers Beach some days, shopping at others, and going out for supper one night with our friend Stat Howland. Stat is a famous drummer from the 80s, having played for Wasp, Lita Ford, and Blackfoot. Hi, nice um, how you. are you, sweetie? Oh, <laughs> good, good to see you guys. Man, you look fantastic. Nice. You too. What's going on, brother? Um, Stat, uh, we arranged uh, when we was in Fort Myers this year, we arranged. Uh, to take Stet out for supper and we went to a steak restaurant and we had a lovely meal with him and just talked to uh, old stories and new stories and uh, Brian's band and, and his band and he's got a studio and we had a really nice evening with him so it was great to catch up with Stet. Telling road stories. <laughs> I imagine you have a few. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're rolling? Yeah, I have lots of good stories. <laughs> Most are inappropriate. But... Yeah, we, we, can't, we can't have them on this film. Probably not. So how was your food? <laughs> it was excellent. Fabulous. So it was great seeing you tonight. This is where we say goodbye. Where we say goodbye for now. For now. One of our uh, trips was, go was to drive to Coral Springs and go to Rock and Roll Ribs and see Nico. So before we left uh, Canada, we got in contact with Nico and said when we was coming down. So um, in the afternoon, we drove down to Coral Springs. And we just came off the uh, freeway and I tell you, Florida drivers are the worst drivers in the world, in the world. They cut you off, they drive too fast, they pass on the right, they don't signal. And they drive like friggin' maniacs, and then they give you the finger like you've done something wrong. Anyway, we're at Rock and Roll Ribs, Nico's restaurant. You look we're great. Ready to rock with ribs. You look great. Thank you. We have the most amazing ribs, and whatever food you have, it's all incredibly good. And he's got all the Iron Maiden uh, memorabilia all on the walls and the rock music and uh, it's a really nice place. Jeff Miller, thank you. Yes. Hey buddy. Hey. <laughs> Jeff Miller. Agent <laughs> Extraordinaire. Jeff Miller. Agent <laughs> Extraordinaire. Give you a hug, you big bear. <laughs> Sit down. Hey, 
buddy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The trooper out. Wow. You know? Yeah. Wouldn't mind buying a few of those. Take them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. Maybe we could even get those signed. You can absolutely. Happy birthday. to uh, send an email ahead to Nico and ask if I could buy some of these spice drums and get them signed uh, so they could be auctioned off when I got home for the music program at the Aeolian Hall. Okay. This is a spice drum. These are, these are, uh, are put out on the table at uh, Nico's restaurant, Rock and Roll Ribs. And um, what you do is you, you tap on the top and the spice comes out at the bottom here. He used to sign, uh, that he signed rather, and uh, a couple t-shirts, and he gave, gave them to me, which was I thought was great of him, and he signed all the tops along with the menus and that, so uh, we're going to have lots of stuff to auction off for the Aeolian Hall's uh, music program. One more thing, we got seniors discount, 40% off. 40%. <laughs> and benefits. And benefits. There you go. So, yeah, now I had a great, a great night's sleep. It was the Trooper beers that... No, no, I don't think it was the Trooper beers. You know what I think it was. <laughs> I know what you think it was. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. We're off. Off to the key. We only got 14 days of life. 14 days of life. And we just arrived at Key West and uh, taking a walk with the missus. And I just finished off the ribs that I had left over from uh, Nico's restaurant last night. Oh, they were so good. They were to die for. After we'd had a nice shower and breakfast, we went clothes shopping on Duval. Well, I, it wasn't really clothes shopping, it's more like cowboy hat shopping. Well, I just bought my first hat here in Key West, and um, my wife's wearing my old one. All this stuff. Stuff. All sorts of stuff. Just bought my second hat. <laughs> I, I got discount for you. I love it. You keep being cheap Do you want and keep getting me the deals. I think they made that after you. Isn't that your ass? That's right. Let's compare. I'm back. Live in front of your naked steaming eyes. But we're Sal's naked Cooper yet. Incognito. Here we are in lovely Key West. This is uh, Duval Street. This is where it all begins of the, uh, of the beginning and the late nights and the early mornings. And we're actually shopping right now. Brian has brought, what, a total of four, Linda? Four hats? Four or five. Funny. Oh, he's, oh, he's you, know what, this, you know what they're, uh, what's this? He's the next week. Save the best to last. Yeah. Let me show them, the, show them the, my last hat I bought. Here, you can wear this one for now. Look this at that This is the best one. Look at this one. Is that a nice hat or what? Five hats now. And we're at a sex, a sex shop. A sexy thing. This is where, this is where, this is where tape buys all those dildos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say can you see the iguana on the grave? This is called a banyan tree. Look at this thing. Wow, what a beautiful tree. It's amazing.
At Tate's, my favorite thing was his outdoor shower. He does have a beautiful bathroom and a shower, but he also has uh, on the deck, he's got an outdoor shower, which is all wood and no roof. And uh, so it was uh, the next day, it was seven o'clock in the morning and I opened the screen doors and it was absolutely beautiful. So I thought I'm gonna take my shower outdoors and uh, Oh, it was absolutely amazing. And then the next thing Brian brought his camera out and started videoing me. But I absolutely love that. When you look up and you see the palm trees. This goes back, back in the early 1950s. Um, my brother's little Ricky, the boy, played I Love Lucy. Um, he got discovered as the world's tiniest drummer at the age of three. Uh, my dad used to play in the big bands back in the day. and. Uh, uh, he just had the talent for it, and uh, the show called The Horace Heights Show it was uh, back before Johnny Carson days. Um, when Lucy was pregnant on the show, they were doing roles for uh, Little Ricky, and uh, Desi Arnaz uh, saw my brother on TV on The Horace Heights Show and uh, was very interested in him getting him as little, as little Ricky. He called my dad, and they flew him out from New York to, uh, to Hollywood. And, it's that simple. He got the role of Little Ricky that fast, and uh, the rest is history. That's but, amazing. You know, yeah. Can you show me a few of these pictures? Was oh, that your brother there? No, this is my dad. We, he was in the Navy. He did the World War II uh, series, should we say, in the war. Yeah. And uh, over here is Andy Griffith and uh, one of his assistants. And uh, that was back in Desi Lou Studio days. A lot of people yeah. know Desi Lou Studios, which Lucy and Desi own. Uh, back in the 50s, they owned all the big production uh, TV series, uh, Star Trek, Hazel the Maid, Andy wow. Griffith Show. And that was Keith's next role. He, he was Johnny Paul on the Andy Griffith Show. He uh, played Opie's best friend. To this day, him and Ron Howard are supposedly still close friends. And this is your brother right here? Yeah, that's then and now. Uh, of course, the great Lucy and Desi, who's passed away. And uh, that's I believe that's old Gretsch drum set that Keith was playing on. Shit. And that's your brother with oh, him. Yeah. And how did he meet Bob Hope? What's that? How did he meet Bob Hope? Well, Bob Hope always, well, him and Lucy were always close friends. Uh, I mean, they had stars coming by pretty much every part throughout the day and, and filming when they were filming. Because your dad was a publicist for Lucy of all, right? Exactly. Yeah, my brother has stories, but wow, my dad had, had a handful of stories. Yep, yeah. yeah, and Desi's right hand man. He covered for Desi so many times, because obviously it's out in the open now that Desi was a womanizer. And they were just normal family, you know? You would think nothing would go on behind, you know, out there in the public, but behind closed doors, you know, as most relationships are in marriages, you know, everybody has their fallouts. But uh, yeah. overall, it was a great time of era of TV time. She was an icon and still is an icon yeah, to really, this day. Yeah. Tate asked us to um, stay for the weekend it, um, which was really nice of him because he's only got a small place but um, we had so many other places to go we had to go and see go up to St Pete's and see Dee and Nick and we had to see Gillian and Dave in Clearwater um, we would love to have stayed longer but um, we just had things to do people to see places to go but that was nice of Tate to say that we could stay